Tutorial 31, welcome to section 6.6. .6. We're going to take a look at exponential and logarithmic equations. So I'm going to show you how to solve some exponential equations and solve some exponential equations and then we're going to apply these problems to some real world um, situations. Now when we talk about solving exponential equations there's going to be two main types of problems. So we're going to solve ex exponential equations when the bases are the same and when the bases are different. And I'll show you what I mean as we work through these problems. I just want to give you an overview. There's two types of exponential equations, one where the base on the left is equal to the base on the right, and there's a certain technique for how to solve it. And then there's the more common type of exponential equation where the bases on the left and the right side of the equation aren't equal, and what do we do in that case? So, Certain type of technique in this version of the exponential equation, certain type in this version of the exponential equation. And the same hold true, holds true for logarithms, but the two variations here are we'll have logarithms on one side of the equation and then there are logarithms on both sides of the equation. Alright, and so we have a certain technique for when logarithms are just on one side of the equation and we have a certain technique when there are logarithms on both sides of the equation. So if we kind of zoom out on this section before we even really get going, there's going to be four different types of problems in here or four different techniques. Two are for exponential equations, two are for logarithms. Now if I had to put my own personal bias on it, I think the easier versions of these problems are at least for the exponentials when the bases are the same and for the logarithms when there are logs on both sides of the equation. And this doesn't mean that every single one of these problems is diff more difficult than every single one of these. It's just on average, I think, oh, I said that backwards. I think on average, these tend to be easier than these guys. And I think on average, these tend to be easier on these guys. But I'm sure I could get some really, really ugly um, logarithmic equation with the, just a log on one side that would be one of my logs on both sides. Or I keep saying that backwards, but I, I think you get my drift. Okay, so with that, with these four overarching types here, we're gonna pick up the bases are the same, exponential, that'll be the first thing we do, and then we'll go to bases are different. And then we'll do logs on one side of the equation, logs on both sides of the equation. All right, so here we go. If we have an exponential equation and the bases are the same on each side, right? So for any algebraic expressions, S and T, and any positive real number, B, such that your base does not equal 1, if b to the s is equal to b to the t, then it's implied that s is equal to t. So what that's trying to say is if you have two powers, a power on the left side of the equation and a power on the right side of the equation, if the bases of those powers are the same, then the exponents have to be the same also. All right, so if the bases are the same, exponents have to be equal, and that's an if and only if. So it goes both directions, all right? So let's play that out in example one. So we're gonna solve the following exponential equations and I want you to see they have a common base or what I was saying up top that the bases are the same. So let me scooch this up so we have this rule in view and then let's play this out. So I think you can see here I have powers on either side. I have five to the two x here and five to the three x plus two. But take note that with these two powers, the bases are the same. You can see the base in the left exponential expression is five, and the base in the right exponential expression is also five. So what this property up here is telling us is that if our powers have the same base, then the exponents must also be the same. So when I take a look at that, we know we can reduce this equation just down to two x has to equal three x plus two. And that makes solving that exponential equation so much simpler, right? Now it's just a linear equation. And we have to get all our, our variable terms on one side and all of our constants on the other. So I have a feeling most of you would subtract 3x here. And that's great. I'll do that in this case. Me personally, I would have subtracted the 2x because I like to have my lead vari or my variable term with a positive coefficient. Here I get negative x is equal to 2. I'll divide both sides by negative 1. And ultimately, I'm going to get x is equal to negative 2. 
Right, so there is my answer for this problem. And let's just check it for a moment. I want you to see that this is, this is a true sentence or true solution. So if we plug in x being negative two, two times negative two on the left side, I would have five to the negative four. If I go to the right side, I would have five to the three times negative two plus two, right? Well, that is equal to five to the negative four, so this checks out. So I want you to see that we did get the correct solution and it was relatively easy to plug it back in and check the answer. All right, let's move over to B. And you might say, well, you know what, Miss A, this is a version where the bases aren't the same, right? I do have a power on the left side, I have a power on the right side, but I have a five here and a 25 here. But you have to think about 25. How could I rewrite 25 specifically as a power of five? Well, I'm not gonna simplify the left side, but I am gonna simplify the right side. I know I can write five, excuse me, 25 as five squared, and all of a sudden I am going to have an example, or I should say I am going to have an equation where the bases are the same. And now let's go back to our exponential rules, right? When you have a power raised to a power, or I should say let's go back to our power rules. Power raised to a power, you're gonna multiply the exponents. And be careful in multiplying Make sure you distribute this 2 not just to the 3x, but you distribute it to the 2 as well. So if I, I'll, I won't skip a step here, but we'll do 5 to the 2x. This would equal 5 to the 2 times 3x plus 2. Again, any time you have a binomial in math, it's protected with parentheses. So here I have 5 to the 2x is equal to 5 to the 6x plus 4. And now I can apply this property. If I have two powers that are the same and their bases are the same, then the exponents have to be equal, right? S has to equal T and that's what we're applying here. So I know 2X has to equal 6X plus 4. All right, I'm going to scooch this up just a bit. So I have a little bit more room to work to finish this out. All right. Let me subtract the 6x over here. Actually, I'm going to do it my way. I would have subtracted the 2x and subtracted the 4, and you might say, well, you're making more work for yourself. Okay, maybe. But ultimately, if I do it this way, I will get 4x here, and I will get negative 4 here. If I divide both sides by 4, I'm going to get x is equal to negative 1. All right. Now, if I plug back in, let's just do a quick check here. Let me scribble this. If I plug in x equaling negative one, I get five to the negative two on the right side, and I'll get 25, and let's be clear here. So we have three times negative one, which is negative three. Negative three plus two is negative one, so this becomes 25 to the negative one. And if we just follow this through, this is like saying one over five squared. This is one over 25 and one over five squared, sure enough, is one over 25. So that checks out. Okay, so this is the version of an exponential equation with a common base, all right? When you have a common base, it's not too terrible to solve it. You wanna just get the bases to be the same number and then set the exponents equal to each other, okay? So with that, we're gonna to flip to to the next example and then I'm going to start to talk about what do you do when you have two expressions on either side of your equation and you don't have a common base. How do you solve that? All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.